But then, let's go into our major discussion for tonight, everyone. And it's about, well, a contestation between the federal government and the state government. The federal government is asking state government to pay back monies it gave them. The federal government told the state government who benefited from the 640 billion naira budget support plan from the central bank to start thinking of paying back. The beneficiaries of that facility may have to start preparing for a payback as the federal government is already holding talks to finalize modalities for its repayment. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Hamad, told Sadat's correspondence that after the National Economic Council meeting that the council has agreed to constitute a team of the Nigerian Governors Firm, Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank within a week to conclude the process. The facility that has been advanced by the federal government to the states is in the total sum of 614 billion naira. And this is to 35 states. This means an equivalent of 175 billion naira per state. Council agreed to constitute a team of the Nigerian Governors Forum, Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank to finalize modalities to commence repayments of this facility to the Central Bank. Well, the Minister of Finance, uh, Budget and National Planning, uh, Mrs. Zainab Mohammed, who disclosed these on Thursday, said each of the state will pay uh, about 175 billion. That's what she said. Some of the governors may not be happy with the move by the federal government uh, to, for the refund coming at a time many states of the Federation are yet uh, are see, groaning and are not, un, are not comfortable with the payment of the new national minimum wage of 30,000 Naira. Are some of these states going to enter into another round of financial troubles? Well, if you are one in one of the states that have yet to pay salaries, then this may concern you because the money some of your states have gotten, the amount, they might now be thinking of how they will pay them back. Can they, or uh, are they a federal allocation uh, from the federal government and the internally re uh, re uh, generated revenue enough to pay back all of these two monies? We'll break this down for you to get a sense of what the state of the finance of some of these states is all about. Let's get talking, everyone. My panel tonight, I have joining me a former deputy governor of the Central Bank, is in our Abuja studio, uh, Mr. Obadiah Melafia. And uh, from uh, uh, Uptown Lagos is uh, Mr. Bismarck Iwani, uh, an economist. Interestingly, he headed a committee advising the federal government on how to pay the minimum wage. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on to, uh, tonight. Let me get a perspective from, me, uh, from you, Mr. Iwani. Give us a sense of how big this trouble might be for some of these state governors that might be thinking of paying that huge amount of money, considering their federal allocation and their internally generated revenue? Uh, many of these states have um, fiscal consolidation issues. The, <clears throat> the profile of their revenues and their cost structure may not allow them to pay the 17 billion naira at, one, at any point in time. Uh, I'm aware that this, there are about 1.9 million state workers all over the country and that uh, the bill for a minimum wage from grade one to four and the consequential costs will come to a significant amount. So having said that, there are certain adjustments that have been recommended, which if carried out, including one, the exchange rate adjustment for the uh, import duty, which has been done. Two, there are some adjustments to the VAT structure, which have to be carried out, which will throw in, uh, remember that 85% of all the VAT collected goes to the states and some other structural adjustments that should put them in a position to be viable. But having said that, the, many of the states are not in a position. And if you look at the debt profile, the most indebted states in terms of external debt are Lagos, which has $1.43 billion, uh, Edo State, Kaduna State, Cross River State, and Bauchi. But when you come to the domestic debt profile, Lagos State, again, highest with $530 billion followed by Delta, Rivers, Aqua, Ibom, and Cross River. After Lagos, um, the most indebted states are high are oil producing states. Then when you take the unemployment level, and uh, you find the states with the highest unemployment in Nigeria, 37.7 is Aqua, Ibom, River State 36.4%, Delta 
Bayelsa 32.6, Abia and Bono, you find that oil producing states, again, have the highest unemployment rate, have the highest indebtedness, and also, in some cases, they almost have the highest inflation rate. So it's a, it's a fiscal problem. It's also a structural problem. And somehow, you know, they got a Paris Club reform. They, they used to get money from the uh, excess good account, which has been fully rated. It's down to almost zero. So now it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, this is a reality show. We now have to deal with how are we going to repay it. I do not think that the Ministry of Finance and the National Economic Council is going to take $17 billion each from the states because they don't have that kind of money. But they will work out a repayment program so that the central bank can accommodate them. But the, those repayments have to be made one, day, one way or the other. And perhaps let me ask you this painful but rather a, a realistic question, Mr. Rewanin. We play with Nigerians. Are some of these states insolvent? Well, uh, states don't go bankrupt, but they do have to basically they have to refinance their debt. I would start by saying some of the states are not viable. And so they need to do things. They need to look at the total number of employees they have. They have to see uh, how they can improve the internally generated revenues. But to a large extent, I would say some of the states are illiquid, but not completely insolvent. They will be bailed out, I think, sooner or later by the federal government. They will be bailed out, but then they have to carry out some structural adjustments in terms of knowing what is the profile of their expenditure and what's the profile of their revenue and what kind of debt overhang uh, they have. And having said all of that, the governors will have to take a hard look and see whether, one, how much money are they spending on security, how efficient are those states are. But the, what, what we are discussing today is a debt problem, which, is the, which makes us look at them. And, but they have more than this debt problem. They have a, a whole slew of problems, some structural, some tactical, some self-imposed, some governance, and more than anything else, the question of viability rather than and solvency. Okay, let me go to uh, Dr. Obadiah Melafia, uh, who has a blend of uh, uh, his experience as an economist and also with a political mix uh, with it. Give us a sense of what this means altogether. Politically speaking now, what kind of trouble do we have on our hands, especially from the perspective of some of the state governments? <laughs> well, thank you. Let me say good evening to you and to my friend Bismarck. Well, um, I have only veered into politics because of the terrible mess I think our country is in. Uh, I think it is a worrisome development politically uh, that the states have gone through some of the problems, uh, fiscal uh, you know, stringencies that they've go gone through. It is a, it's a big problem and I don't know, the timing is a bit problematic. You know, we just have new governments in most of the states. They are just settling down and trying to set up proper administrations and so on. And for the government to now, the federal government to now, you know, lumber them with this, this problem at this time is a bit worried. And I'm a little bit surprised because if I recall 2015, 2016, the understanding was that the bailout would be repayable over a period of 20 years. And if I recall, it was only one state, Ogun State, who, that insisted they would pay back everything in 10 years. So I'm a little bit surprised that the issue is coming up at this time. Having said that, um, the way the federal government has gone about some of these bailouts, including the Paris Club and so on, nobody knows how much a state is owed. They wake up one morning and say, oh, by the way, we still owe Ogun so much, and they pay. Oh, we, oh, we still owe Oshun so much. And these things happen just before elections, you know? Uh, and recently, they've even paid Kogi just before another election. So, look, we are behaving like children and not serious, serious leaders. There's a better way to run this country uh, in a way that will take our nation forward. Uh, we are not doing that. And uh, I would have expected 
that the Ministry of Finance, the central bank, the federal government, once these loans, are, these bailouts are given, that there is a repayment plan. And in fact, there's a monthly statement or quarterly statement about how these funds have been used and then warning them over time of their re repayment period uh, as expected. Okay. Part of the uh, challenge is that uh, let, many let me, of the states are being run uh, let me, let me. You know, in a way that would shock uh, people who understand public finance. Okay, let, let, me, let me pause for, uh, uh, we, we need to take a pause for a moment. 200 advisors. Yeah, sorry, uh, Dr. Melafia, we need to take a breather. For a moment, we will take a break, but when we come back, yourself and Mr. Bismarck Iwani will be telling us how we should go about it, perhaps on the political side of things, the lead political leadership, what it should be doing to fix what may have become a big problem. And from the point of view of Mr. Iwani, we will be asking him perhaps a tough question that the state government will be facing, how to pay the immediate burden of minimum wage. That's a big problem, isn't it? We'll talk about it when we return from the break, everyone. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. In several states of the Federation, the workers have not been paid salaries. So shall we say that most workers are being owed salaries. There are a backlog of unpaid salaries in several states of the Federation. And in the midst of all this is the agitation from the Nigerian Labour Congress that the federal government and the state government should start reconsidering or considering how to pay the minimum wage of 30,000 Naira. Don't forget, just yesterday, the federal government is saying, state government, you are owing us money that we gave you for bail out. You need to pay us back. So... Let's talk about this and continue with the conversation. My partner tonight, Mr. Bismarck Urani, uh, an economist who's been speaking to, with us on the program, and Dr. Obada Amelafia, a former deputy governor of the Central Bank. Let me quickly go back to you, uh, Dr. Amelafia. Uh, As it stands right now, if we say, uh, you heard what Mr. Rewani said earlier, that most of the state of the Federation are not viable. That means there is a major problem. So politically speaking, how do you fix that problem? Well, um, the states are there and they could be viable if really we are serious about managing things. Like I was saying earlier, one governor will come, one sworn in, he will bring 200 advisors all on the pay, just as a means of, uh, you know, patronage. When they don't have offices, they don't really have any job descriptions, they're just there on the payroll of the government. Nobody does that anywhere in the world except in Nigeria. And, uh, you know, secondly, I would have expected the Minister of Finance, the federal government, and the Central Bank of Nigeria to set up a mechanism where they are really advising the states on their public finances. There's no such thing. The governor and his team sit there and literally decide whatever they do with the money. And some of them even have this really duplicitous penchant for incurring huge loans from the World Bank or anywhere else just before they leave government. I mean, it, it, it cannot be serious. But, 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 we but, but we Dr. Melafia, apologies if I'm reporting quickly, practice. because you raise a very important point but, there. Can the federal government, or is there a way to stop some of these states that are incurring, incurring too many debts, from uh, stopping them from incurring more debts now that they have too many debts anyways? Yes, they are supposed to do that. Um, if, if you are hearing me, uh, they're supposed to do that through the debt management office. You know, there's supposed to be a ceiling on, on uh, you know, the debt, depending on the sustainability of every state's uh, debt profile. Uh, I'm not sure how that is really working, but we have reached a very dire strait for many of the states. They are no longer viable from a financial point of view, and uh, there's no one to put a limit on the profligacy of some of the chief executives of those states. And, you know, there are very serious problems and these issues are going to repeat themselves unless we really fundamentally change the way we do business. We can learn a bit from India 
where they practice what they call cooperative federalism. That, of course, uh, we have a federal system with the federal center and the federating states uh, uh, who are also autonomous, but for the sake of good government and good public order, there ought to be a cooperative framework so that they are coordinating public finance and other aspects of economic development. Uh, various states could group themselves together to develop regional programs, either with the state governments or with other state governments or with the federal government and so on. What stops, for example, Nassau State uh, that have, you know, areas very close to the federal capital and Niger State and Kogi and contiguous areas to develop joint programs with the federal government, with the federal capital territory, All right. you know, in terms of infrastructures and industries and the rest of them, you know, to take advantage of geographical contiguity. That is what I call the principle of cooperative federalism. All right. Let and me we... pause you for, uh, for a moment. Uh, let, let me, there, there is a question I'd like to throw to Mr. Rewani, which I would like you to also respond to. Mr. Rewani, there is this uh, threat of a global economic ECOP. I mean, the, the world powers are already preparing uh, for this uh, economic shift. And with what is happening and the condition of indebtedness of some of the state government and the fact that some of them cannot pay workers' salary, then the labor union is asking for the minimum wage. It's a dilemma, isn't it? Should there be a fear in the minds of an average Nigerian on how to put food on the table with all of this on the table, Mr. Rewani? No, I, I, I looked at all of the states. You know, there are 1.9 million workers in all the states of the, of the Federation. There is no reason why any state cannot and will not be able to pay the minimum wage. All they have to do is to give up on a few of the, um, you know, some of the, uh, what I call some extravagant ways and means of doing things. But the states are possible, they are able to pay the minimum wage. The total minimum wage implication for states, both those with, uh, earning below 30,000 and the consequential cost is not enough to derail the state. For example, uh, there's a state in the Northwest, which I will not mention, whose revenues, internally generated revenues, are less than, I mean, their salaries are 253% of their internally generated revenues. If that state in the Northwest does not get the federal allocation, they cannot even pay salaries. And they are actually using part of the allocation to subsidize other activities. And I will not mention that state, but it's just an example. But if you come back and see what if you take 17.5 billion naira from any of these states, and if an oil producing state, a good oil producing state gets 17 or 18 billion naira in a good month. But you know, in, in other times, in some states in the Southwest, they get about five or six billion naira. So there's no way that the federal government can recover this at one shot or the central bank. It has to be restructured so that these states can pay maybe two, three billion naira a month over the next 11 or 10. But All right. you can structure this debt without them doing something about their governance and the way their economies are run in all of those all right. states. All right, Mr. Ruani. Let, let, let's perhaps get our closing shot from uh, Dr. Melafia in our Abuja studio. Uh, how would you advise the federal government uh, on, uh, on what is happening presently? Uh, because there is a dire situation in this case. How would you advise, for example, an urgent step that the federal government or the president should take to salvage the future of some of our states or the constituent units? Well, the federal government is the federal government. I, I think the timing is a bit problematic. And uh, it is very clear that a lot of the states won't be able to pay this money now. So we need to restructure it properly uh, and we need to create, you know, a window of opportunity where states can be able to, to pay. And uh, we need to work with them through the Fed, through the Central Bank of Nigeria for them really to even look again at their public finances. I mean, if you owe the government a lot of money like this, they have a right to have a say in how you, you run your public finances. Okay. And we, the governments, the state governments should also be careful.
a lot of, if they saved money from all these trips overseas, every small thing you go okay. abroad and so on and so forth, with a huge entourage and the security votes, if we save from that, we okay. should be able, I think, to pay workers' salaries. All right. And by the way, honestly speaking, I think even 30,000 is too small. The minimum I would expect is 40,000. Look, you and I fuel our cars. 30,000 just is enough to fuel our cars per month. It's a very so difficult little. situation. And I, expect them to uh, and I, and uh, I hope that things will get better in the coming days as uh, political leadership in the country and in this state will rethink some of these strategies. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Obadiah Melafia, a former deputy governor of the Central Bank, and Mr. Bismarck Ruwani, an economist and the CEO of Financial Derivatives. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, both of you, thank you so much. Well, that's our show for tonight. Many thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.